Car Cost Canada provides the dealer cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. The link is in the description below. Welcome to the Ford Ranger. I feel really short. I feel really tall. Yes. I hear switch. Why do you always have to be better than me? Well, I have the long torso <laughs> and the short legs. And legs. Speaking of legs, legs. <laughs> they are on full display today. <laughs> so explain where we are. We're right outside of Whistler, BC with the all new Ford Ranger. And we're taking it off road. Who gets to go first? Yes, finally. Again. Well, Brian, I got to tell you, they have been working us hard on this trip. Absolutely. This isn't just like eating and drinking and driving on this trip. We no, been... we don't drink and drive. <laughs> eating and drinking. Yes. And then... And then... <laughs> Anyways, yeah. You no get the drink, idea. No drinking and driving, but we've been exercising. Yes. Now, that's totally foreign to us uh, going on a press trip. And they want, they want us... So they took us to Squamish, which is halfway to Whistler. And they said, hey, do you want to go on a little hike? And we're like, sure, we'll go on a little hike. Yeah. So we go up on the gondola up the mountain. Then they take us on this on this hike to this trail. What's it called? Via Ferrata. Is uh, that like Pinin Farina? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like a new Starbucks drink. <laughs> <laughs> and so what this is, um, it, it was pioneered in the uh, Italian Alps. They put all of these sort of ladders and rungs, and you can go climbing without any mountain climbing expertise us yeah. and uh and so that's what we did and it was pretty extreme it was you're vertical at some points right yeah. but you're, you're you're strapped in uh it's a great way to be introduced into mountain climbing yeah. you know really so the reason is that they wanted us to experience the ranger lifestyle and uh, we're also doing e-mountain bikes yeah i'm looking forward to that you know so e-mountain bikes, the Ranger is really geared toward the outdoor enthusiast. Yeah, they want this to be the weekend warrior truck. Hey, uh, a guy who's running a business and needs a truck for work, they'll sell them an F-150. But they really think that the market for this are the people that like to go skiing and snowboarding and windsurfing and mountain biking and all that kind dirt of stuff. Dirt biking, don't forget dirt biking. And dirt biking, yeah. yeah. I, could, I could see a couple bikes in the back of there on the bed there. So I remember clearly, Brian, it was in 2011, I believe, when they canceled the old Ranger. And I said, well, are you replacing it? And they said, no, no, all of our needs will be filled with a base F-150. We can sell a, a stripped down base F-150 and that will fulfill everybody's needs. Were they right? I don't think so because the Ranger's back. Yeah, it is back. And you know who had the market all to themselves? Toyota, the Tacoma, they had no competition. And they sold so many of them and 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 they created a very loyal base. Yeah. So number one truck in the world in this class is Toyota Tacoma slash Hilux, right? Yep. That vehicle that's used all over the world. Number two in the world is this. And this has been sold, this truck, uh, in international markets. Now the most notable, I think it was 2013, this Ranger was introduced for the Australian market. And I asked them, I said, well, you're making it already. Why don't you bring it to North America? No, 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 no. An F-150 will be all that you need. But guess what happened? Who else came back with a mid-sized truck? General, General Motors. That's right, the Colorado and Canyon. So now Ford, is, they're the pickup truck brand, right? Is kind of playing catch up a little bit. Yeah, but you know, they're, they're catching up pretty quick because right now currently in Canada, they're number three right now. Yeah, so it's Tacoma, then I think it's Colorado, one of the two GM yep. trucks, and then this. Yes. And it's selling very, very well, mm -hmm. also because it's brand new. Kind of brand new. That's the other thing is, it isn't um, an all new truck, it's a modified truck for a market. You know who we had a chance to talk to? The head of product planning for this truck and F-150. Since we left the segment in 2011, the segment's seen exponential growth. And so now it's a very viable market for, uh, for us. Uh, obviously, F-150 is uh, the leader in its segment, so we know trucks. It made sense for us to participate in midsize uh, pickup. Uh, this Ranger meets all the durability testing that an F-150 needs to make, uh, needs to uh, attain. It uh, has an aluminum hood, uh, aluminum door, slightly different front fascia. It has a front steel bumper, which is unique to the North American market. Uh, select use of aluminum, which I spoke about, and the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine coupled with a 10-speed automatic transmission. So this is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine. Now, what are EcoBoost engines good at? Uh, torque. Lots torque. of torque. Yeah, and lots of power. Yeah. So Ford believes 
that with this one engine strategy, only selling this truck with one engine, that they can capture a large slice of the market because it's going to have uh, the horsepower you need, more importantly, the torque for towing. What's the towing capacity? 7,500 pounds. Yeah, which is best in class, yep. which is impressive. Um, so they, they figure they can, they can cast a wide net. So yeah, EcoBoost engines are wonderful engines and they've been out for quite a while now. What are they not good at? Fuel economy. And that's yeah. the thing is, you know, in the lab, for the EPA ratings, they can get good fuel economy. But in everyday situations, I find when you use all that torque, they can suck gas. This thing, we driving up here uh, from Vancouver and driving it around here, we're getting 14 liters per 100 kilometers. Yikes. Right? That's not great, right? From a four cylinder. From, from right? a four cylinder. But yeah, once you get into that turbo though, which is often, it's gonna start sucking it up pretty good. But on the way here, we did a lot of the highway driving and uh, the one thing I will say, it's very quiet and it's smooth to the point where I find it over, well, when there's nothing in the truck, right? Yeah. Uh, it can be a, a little bit bobbing and porpoising over bumps, a bit too soft for my liking. Did you notice it? I did notice it a little bit, um, but it'd be really good for an everyday driver though. If you're driving this everyday into the office, whatever, it's very civilized in here. It's very quiet, got a lot of power and a lot of torque. Yeah, it's comfortable enough for sure. Now, because this is an older vehicle, you know, they they might have updated. I haven't. I can't remember what the inside of the you know Australian uh, one looks like. But um, you know, it's not the latest and the newest, but it's fine for this category. Like you think about what the other brands have, it's perfectly fine in here. Yeah. So let's talk about. Well, we're off road right now, but we did a, a little bit more extreme off roading than this. Absolutely. And this has the FX4 package. And this is the one they think they're gonna sell the most in. So we have the uh, Lariat, right? But they think the XLT with the um, uh, FX4 package will be the best seller. Yeah, so this package is $1,400. I think that's a pretty good value because you get a lot for that. Yeah, right? you get skid plates, uh, three skid plates yep. underneath. You get the all-terrain tires. You get the monotube shocks. You get, um, what else do you get? This there. Oh yeah, you get the terrain, the terrain management, management system. Yeah, so here in the center is a dial that you can go for the you know traction, stability control, terrain modes, normal, uh, grass, gravel, snow, mud, ruts, and sand. And it also has the hill descent control, which is kind of like a low speed cruise control. Yeah, and that only comes with the FX4 package. The, all, all Rangers are four by four, but yep. you only get that with, a, with the FX4. I gotta say though, we now have been driving it for two days. The more I drive it, actually, I think I appreciate it more driving it like this. Off-road. Off-road. I think it's it, it shows more of its capability doing this than driving it on paved roads. On paved roads, I didn't love the drive, but I actually, the, the spending the day going up and down hills over bumpy roads, going through water, all that kind of stuff, I, I kind of feel a little bit more of an affinity for it. And they said that uh, the durability test that they use for F-150, they use for this. I don't exactly sure what that means, but obviously whatever internal testing they have for F-150, they're using for this. So what do you think about this size of truck in general though? I have one. <laughs> <laughs> I have an older Tacoma. Um, Does it make sense to buy this over uh, an F-150 for per se? You know, I'm talking like for an everyday person. I know people that own F-150s and they don't even use it to pull anything or haul anything. They use it as a daily driver and they just like trucks, right? Yeah, they like trucks. They like the space. So that's one thing. They like being able to see over things. And if they ever do, like the reason why I, I listen, I have an old Tacoma because I like having the ability to go to Home Depot or wherever it is. I can take stuff to the dump. I can throw bicycles in the back. Uh, and basic, I don't worry about it. But mine's old. I, you know, this truck is like fifty thousand dollars. Mine was, I think, paid ten grand for it, right, as a used truck. So yeah, it's a very different proposition having an old beater truck like mine versus a shiny new one like this. But you know, at this price point, man, you can get an F-150. This is, this one here as tested, this is the, the Lariat. So it starts at 42289 and then with all the options here. Look at the total. It is 49500 So lot of just money, under $50,000. But, you know, if you load up all those other trucks, you're going to, you're in that same ballpark as well. What's the number one thing that Tacoma has going for it? It's got a following, that's for sure. And what you does know, that mean? 
That means resale value. Yeah. The resale value on those things is astronomical. You buy one, you drive it for 10 years. Ask me how I know. I had to pay. How do you know? How do you know Because I had to buy one that was 10 years old and it was like the stripped down base model <laughs> and they still fetch big money. It's crazy. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm not saying this won't do that, but it'd be interesting to see if it can compete on that front. And that's the thing is like someone's going to spend, you know, like, you know, speaking to the product planning guy here, he said, okay, but we're very competitive with what everybody else is in the marketplace. So the number one truck obviously is Tacoma, right? And they're thinking, okay, someone's going to spend $50,000 on a Tacoma. Well, you know, in four years, you're going to get most of that back. Is that the case with this? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Well, we did also have a chance to check out your truck. Yeah. It was interesting. Yeah. yeah because we wanted to see the different size of bed that they both offer and, you know, length, width, everything else. Okay. okay side to side. Inside, inside. Inside? Yeah. All right. That's 57 inches, okay, and then, um, Length? no, inside the wheel well. Okay. Okay, inside the wheel well is 45, and then length. We've we'll got to do depth, too. That's uh, 70, 74, basically. 74. A second here, I'm going to write that down. 74, and then depth. I'll do that. Is... 18. Okay. okay. Inside the bed, I guess we'll go under the lip, is 64. 64. Okay, it's wider. Inside the wheel well, 46. About the same. Okay. This one's definitely higher, though, that's for sure. Uh, length is a way shorter. Oh, yeah. That is 66. Wait a second, go back. That's not 66, it's 56. Wait, wait, wait. 60. And, and depth. depth, just a second here. 60 and depth. A lot deeper. What? That's 20. Well, uh, yeah, 21. Okay. So. It's bigger in every way except for length. What's what's more useful, Brian, longer or wider? Well, <laughs> depends who you ask. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 if I'm going to spend all of this money and buy a pickup truck, I want a little more bed capability than this five-footer. I guess you can flop the tailgate yeah. down and get a bed extender if you need it. Um, but I don't know. I don't know about that. All depends what you're using it for. You know, yeah. I I have a dirt bike and I you do. I do have a dirt bike. I've yes. Never seen it. Yes. Regardless of what kind of uh, truck I had, even a full size, you'd still have to put that rear tailgate down anyway. A bed extender down yeah. there. Okay. Okay. So, the sweets for the Ranger. Ranger's back. Number yeah. one. Number one. That is right. Number two. Towing capacity. Best in class. Seventy-five hundred pounds. Number three, over 300 pound-feet of torque is a satisfying vehicle to drive. Yes. Now the Sour. It likes gas. It likes <laughs> gas. So. <laughs> uh, the bed is a little small. A little bit, yeah. Um, we found the sink system slow. It's a little bit on the sluggish side. But that can be updated, hopefully. And we found the on-road ride to be a little bit vague. Much better off-road, but on-road felt a little bit vague. So you could put that on the suite as well. On the flip side, it was really good off-road. Yeah, a really impressive off-road. I think that, as I said, the more I drive it, in this situation, the more I'm, I'm feeling an affinity for it. Uh, I think my old two-wheel drive Tacoma wouldn't do as well up here. Mind you, you know, like, this isn't even the most extreme stuff that we are doing with it. We, we are no four-wheel drive experts by no, any means no. at all, right? You know, so, but we're, you know, the weekend warrior, we, we've, we've been off-road before. You know, and I think we're a good representation of the buyer of this in a way. Because who out there, I'd like to see, you know, put in the comments, do you take your pickup truck off-roading, like extreme 4 by 4 -ing? It'd be interesting to see how many people say, oh yeah, I do it all the time, or are people overbuying capacity? Like you're buying a 4 by 4 truck with an FX4 package with the ability to go off-road, are you ever really using it? Yeah, or are you just going on logging roads to go camping uh, every weekend or even the odd weekend? Or even just using it for snow in the winter? Yeah.
which is probably most people. Yeah. That's what I think. Let so us know. Anyway, yeah, let us know. That's another edition. That's the Ford Ranger edition of Sweet, Sweet and, and Sour. Sour. Now, if you're watching this on either of our other channels, Everyday Reviews or Motor Mouth, make sure that you head over in the description to the Sweet and Sour channel, the brand new channel that we have below there. So we're gonna be doing more videos like this. Not all of them will be on our channels. We're just doing this to try and drive some extra traffic. So please go to the link below, subscribe, hit the notification, and you'll see more Sweet and Sour soon. Thanks for watching. Car Cost Canada provides the dealer cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. The link is in the description below.